Hey boys and girls, we're going to try a really fun craft today. This is my first time trying it, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a little involved, but it doesn't require a lot of ingredients, so I hope you enjoy it. All right, boys and girls, I've got everything we need to make our salt dough ornaments today. I've got cookie cutters, and I've got a bowl for us to mix our dough in. Salt. You need one cup of salt. That's a lot of salt. Flour, you're gonna need four cups of flour. And you will need one and a half cups of warm water to start with. We may end up using a little bit more water just in case it get, the dough gets a little sticky. Um, and it's too thick, we might have to um, add a little bit of water to thin it out a little bit, but um, we're gonna start with one and a half cups. I've got a straw so that we can poke a hole in our ornaments. If you don't want to make these ornaments and you don't want a hole in yours, you don't have to, it's up to you. Um, but I'm gonna make these um, Easter ornaments so that I can hang them maybe on my um, mantle. And then you need a rolling pin and something to roll you, your dough out on. If you just want to use your countertop, you can do that too. I've got this. I've had this set for years, so I'm going to use this. But you can roll your, roll your dough out um, however you are comfortable with doing that. So that is what we need to get started, guys. So let's do it. All right, boys and girls. Now we need to preheat our oven on 250 degrees and I have two ovens here so I'm going to preheat both ovens on 250 degrees and that takes a few minutes to heat up and then we should be ready to go when it's, when it's time to pop our ornaments in the oven. And after you are done preheating your oven you want to make sure that you have baking sheets all set up and I've put parchment paper on mine so they don't stick. Um, but whatever you guys do when you bake your cookies is what you want to do with these as well so they don't stick to your pans. All right, boys and girls. So I have already measured out all of our flour and our salt, but I wanted to show you something really quick that my mommy and my grandmother showed me when I was a little girl. And it's how to measure out your flour. Now, the first thing that you want to do is scoop a whole bunch of flour, more than what your cup will hold, into your measuring cup. So you want your flour to be mounded up like so on top of your um, measuring cup. And then you're gonna take like a butter knife and you're going to tap the top of your measuring cup through the flour. And this makes sure that the flour gets down inside the measuring cup so that you have the exact amount that you're trying to measure out. And in the process, you wanna make sure you do this over your flour container because it'll make a bit of a mess if you don't. So you just make sure that it's tapped down in there nice and good. And then you're gonna flatten out your knife on the edge of the uh, measuring cup and you're gonna slide it over the edge of the measuring cup and get rid of the excess amount of flour. And then it should look like that on the top. So that way you know you have the right amount of flour measured out for your um, whatever it is you're making. It's important when you bake that you measure out the correct amount of each of the ingredients, at least for most of the ingredients. Because if you don't, then a lot of times your cookies won't bake up properly or your bread or whatever it is you're making won't, won't work properly. So there we go. Now, I did forget to mention that you probably need something to mix your um, dough together. So 
We're gonna go ahead and add our water to our salt and our dough mixture and start mixing that together. Get that all mixed together. So I just measured out the cup and a half of water. And from the looks of the inside of my bowl, I still have quite a bit of dry. I don't know if you can see that, but there's quite a bit of dry ingredients still left on the bottom of my bowl. So I think that I am going to, well, I don't know. Once you get it mixed together, I'm going to try, roll up my sleeves here, make sure your hands are clean, although we're not going to be eating this, you still always want to make sure that your hands are clean before you start cooking. Always important to have clean hands. So when you bake a lot of times, sometimes you got to get your hands dirty. So we're going to go ahead and try and mix this together with our hands and see first before we add more water. Because sometimes if you mix it with your hands, you can get those dry ingredients that are left over in the bottom to mix into your dough. Just takes a little bit more effort. And I am thinking, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm thinking See all those dry ingredients I still have in my bowl? I'm thinking I need, oops, thinking I need a little bit more water. So I'm gonna grab some real quick. I'll be right back. Now, when you're adding more water than what your recipe calls for, you don't wanna to add too much all at one time. So I'm just gonna add a little bit and see what happens. That little bit might have just done the trick. Yep, I think so. We're gonna knead all of this together with our hands really good. You don't want your dough to be too sticky. But you don't want it to be too dry either. And your mommies and daddies will know what to do. All right, I think we are all set. So this is what it should look like. You should be able to form it into a pretty decent ball. And it should be a little sticky, but not coming off on your hands sticky. All right, that is good to go. So we are ready for our next step. Okay, so now, we are ready to roll out our dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that it's in a nice ball. And I'm gonna set it where I plan to roll out my, my dough. You can set yours wherever you plan to roll out your dough. And we're gonna push this down into the shape that we want it to be and just kind of get it started before we start using our rolling pin. And just try and press it out as even as you can. with your hands. OK, 
making sure your edges all stay together. All right. I think that's about ready to start rolling it out. I kind of remember why I didn't like this too much because it moves. So I'm going to hold it with my pants here on the edge, I think, anyway. Roll this out. You don't want your um, dough to be super thick when you go to use your cookie cutters, okay? Because if it's really thick, then it will puff up. And then it won't dry out. And then it'll take forever for you to be able to decorate your cookies. And you don't want that. These aren't cookies, what am I saying? Your ornaments. Push these edges out. Turn this. Oops. Messed up that edge there. There should be enough of this dough for you to make quite a few ornaments. And I don't know if you can see how thick that is. But it is not very thick. Let me lift this up so you can kind of get an idea. I don't have a measuring stick, so I can't tell you exactly, but it's a reasonable thickness. Not too thin, but not too thick either. And you wanna try and make sure that your um, area that you've rolled out, your dough is as even as you can be so that you don't have one ornament that's super thick and one ornament that's, that's really thin. They're all about the same. The thinner they are, the faster they will cook and dry out. All right. I think we are about ready to press some ornaments. <laughs> 